Hello and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program. In this series, I'm calling KSP POV, where we play Kerbal Space Program in first person. Today we have uh, a couple missions to do, and they're both going to be probe missions, so we're going back to the uh, mission control room. Uh, yeah, uh, in the last episode, we designed and tested this rocket and delivery system to not only bring a rover to the MUN, but to return the probe itself, uh, the delivery probe, return that back to Kerbin. In the last episode, we sh taught ourselves that it could be done, um, and uh, so now today is the time to prove it. Uh, we're not doing any simulations, we're just gonna head for the month. So, uh, it's a pretty standard takeoff, the launch vehicle we've already seen before, so it's not like it's anything new, so gonna kind of speed through the trip until I get there. We go for 101 kilometer apoapsis just to give ourselves a little extra room to not uh, have to skim the surface of the atmosphere too much. It's okay, we don't go for the most efficient launches, but we usually plan for enough delta V to make up for it anyways. And we're just circularizing our burn. There we have it. Uh, we still have the lower stage that we're going to be using uh, as part of our transfer, about half of our transfer burn. We pop it into the flight computer and we get ready. First part burns pretty quickly because it's the fuel engine. Uh, the second is the fuel engine. It's very efficient, but this burn was very long. Um, I sped that footage up to a thousand percent just to make it a little bit more bearable. But the yeah, you know, the fuel engine had so little thrust to weight that it was probably about a two and a half minute. And here we are, arriving at the periapsis, and we use uh, actually surprisingly little delta V to capture. So that was good, we still have quite a bit remaining in our fuel tank. I bring up the map, but it is, it is mostly of no use to me here. Then we uh, go ahead and do our landing burn. And at the end of our landing burn, we're putting on a, a maneuver to kill our horizontal velocity. Uh, we're going to take a chance and plot that into the flight computer and uh, really hope that it doesn't end up uh, killing this mission by smacking us into the surface before we're ready. So during this whole time, I was. Uh, Biting my nails, I was on the edge of my seat. I, uh, there was a very real chance that it could have gone sideways, but when it didn't, I was very happy. Um, I did forget to uh, go back into first person mode right there uh, when I was doing all those things. Uh, I uh, got caught up in the excitement of, uh, of the mission. So yeah, we go ahead and extend our landing gear and get ourselves ready. I love this game. So yeah, so since we're having to rely on Flight Engineer for our information about the burn, and I don't exactly trust Flight Engineer, because um, it tells you to burn very much at the last second. I don't know that I want to trust my calculations to that. And I mean, waiting until the last second is how to correctly do uh, a suicide burn. Um, but I've been I've been hurt by these programs before. 
and I, I just felt a little bit better handling it myself. Um, once again, not taking the most efficient route, but it's okay. I feel like we can afford it. Yeah, so now we're just slowly gliding down to the surface. Just every now and then, we uh, get the throttle to keep our max speed from going too high. And with those little beeps, we know that we're quickly approaching the surface. And if you look in the top right screen, the vessel view, you can actually see uh, how the craft is approaching the ground. And uh, I suggest watching it right now. As you see, I accidentally ascend and because my SAS was still locked to retrograde. I went ahead and flipped myself up. And at the very last second, was able to burn enough time to uh, not crash. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my thrust entirely just to keep from accidentally launching back up in the air while I'm doing all this stuff. Um, I should have had this somehow set. Uh, I was not entirely sure how to action group a decoupling stage, and uh, I, I there was a little bit too much uh, to lose in this mission, so I did this part in third person. But if I do this again, I will will not do that. Um, try to keep keep true to the, the namesake of the series. Um, I should have. Uh, Operate, done all that operation, all those operations in here. So I apologize about that. And with that, we transmit uh, a bunch of science. It's uh, our first real transmission um, back from the MUN, uh, well, at least from this biome. And there's only repeatable uh, experiments on there. There's no mystery goo, there's no magnetometer boom um, just stuff that we can get full full science for transmitting it back um, and so now we are going to leave the rover here for now and uh, just work on getting getting this uh, this delivery probe back home and I thought I didn't set up an action group for all these but I did I just put it way down the line on uh, number six because uh, I had all the first five action groups set up for the rover. So I go ahead and uh, run one of the mystery goos that we added on at the very last minute. Um, and then I take off and tumble uh, because I was uh, locked to retrograde, of course. So I bring my gears back up and we just get ready for kind of just a brute force straight up maneuver there we go we break the sphere of influence in the mun and we are orbiting Kerbin we go ahead and plot in my uh, first burn to get us close to the surface best to do this at the apoapsis because that's the slowest point in your orbit so uh, you don't have to fight against the extra speed that you would at the periapsis so yeah so I go ahead and bring my uh, my, my periapsis down uh, to just below uh, the atmosphere line so about the atmosphere line is 70,000 meters but I bring it down to about 42 a uh, thousand meters because uh, I know that with 42 I'm not going to skip back into the atmosphere. Higher than that sometimes you'll you'll exit. Uh, I time warp a little too fast and now I'm in the atmosphere. Uh, I'm at 66 kilometers um, and so I have to act quickly to activate my descent action group and then I kill the uh, flight computer mode that it was going to do the burn at and I just manually burn it myself uh, because uh, we need to get that orbit down uh, otherwise we're just going to be tumbling through the atmosphere over and over again it's going to take way too long and there's always uh, room for mishap when it takes way too long 
So I go ahead and I stage the lower set um, and get myself down just to the heat shield. But uh, the lower set's already kind of stuck in front of me, and so you can see it burning right up there. I got all the solar panels extended on it, but uh, there's nothing we can really do to get it out of our way. If we were to turn to try to throw it off, there's a chance we could end up blowing up uh, some or all of our craft. So we just ride it out, let the uh, the piece slow us down, and uh, shortly it kind of slides out of the way, and we are once again free. And uh, because we hit the descent stage or the descent action group, our parachutes were armed. Primed, and when they hit 1,500 feet, they popped open. And once they hit 700 feet, they uh, fully deployed and brought us down to a safe uh, speed. And we are safely splashed down, and we saw, uh, completed that contract. Very excited. We've uh, had that contract for quite a while um, since like episode four, I think. Um, because we, uh, we landed on the mun, but we neglected to see that we needed a return. So we just got a whole mess of science. Um, and so instantly I go and I unlock uh, the extra landing gear, which uh, gives me the Alcor pod, which is uh, very exciting. We've been trying to work our way towards that for, uh, well, that, that's just a goal. It was a goal to unlock that. And so I was very excited to unlock that and start using that in the upcoming episodes. But for now, we're going back to the rover, the Busy B3. Um, this rover's mission is uh, twofold. First, it's going to be uh, scanning a, a Munstone. It's going to need to locate and scan a Munstone. Um, and the second part is it's going to act as a beacon for uh, a crewed flight to the Mun. Uh, they're going to try to land close to the rover so the scientist can bring back that Munstone, um, thus completing another contract. Uh, I don't know why I like directly aimed for the decoupler when I uh, started driving. I could have just messed up my wheels. Oh, yep, and uh, here's where I lose power, uh, or lose uh, connection. The satellite wasn't uh, no longer in view. Um, and my batteries ran out uh, because the solar panels weren't placed completely directly, so they're not producing a lot of power right now. And uh, my antenna is still pointed towards Kerbin, uh, so it is not getting a signal uh, because it's not trying to connect to the MUN. Uh, and so. I'm starting to freak out a little bit. Um, I'm starting to think that this mission's a wash, but I fast forward time and get a little bit of signal, just enough to change the uh, the target of the comms network or the comms dish. Uh, so now I'm back in control. Uh, the the Mun satellites are there, um, and just tilting my rover just a little bit gets the solar panels in full view of the sun. And I don't have a lot of uh, energy. I'm really riding on it. So I decide to just find a place to park it and uh, fast forward some time. And I'm fast forwarding time expecting it to go up, but it's not until I really start cranking on the time warp uh, do I get enough battery to continue the mission. Um, so that added some extra time to the, the mission time, but of course it's a rover, so that's okay. It's not gonna run out of life support. So now it's just a matter of going through the landscape and trying to find ourselves a stone. I'm going to leave this part of the footage mostly unedited. In fact, most of this rover mission has uh, been unedited thus far, uh, just because it's something different that we haven't done. Um, when we did the rover missions on Kerbin with the Baobab, it was such a an ordeal that I had to just fast forward everything just to keep it from being too too boring. Uh, here I'm trying to test to see if this is a Munstone because the Munstones have collision but that did not 
So I keep uh, keep moving on. But as I was saying, um, there was there was so little progress when we did the Baobab mission that I just wanted to get through it, just fast forward until until the end. Um, but with this mission, it's more about the exploration. I mean, that's what our agency is all about. We're the Atomic Celestial Exploration Agency um, Department company, whatever you want to call it, uh, but our main goal is science and exploration, so uh, this, was a, this was a fun little thing to do, just to kind of look through the cameras and uh, try, trying not to drive too quickly and flip myself, uh, or myself, flip this rover I should say. So now I'm trying to see if that rock has collision. But it doesn't look like it, but I'm not quite sure. So I try to back up, back up one of my wheels over it, and then I realize, nope, that is not a mudstone. So fighting against the downhill uh, slope. And I just want to test it just one more time. I decide to hit the arm just to see uh, if it does anything, but it doesn't. Uh, that's one good thing about the scanning arm is uh, it doesn't waste energy scanning something that doesn't matter. It'll just tell you it doesn't matter. And uh, we're only going two and a half meters per second, but uh, this thing uh, in zero atmosphere can be wildly uncontrollable uh, if going too fast. So, you know, I'm going about four meters per second. We, we got all the way up to uh, 10 to 15 meters per second on Kerbin uh, before we lost real control. Uh, but, but out here, it doesn't take too much. And since it's so far away and such a uh, hassle to fix any problem with a rover, it's very important not to flip over. So yeah, we're just uh, driving along, looking through. Everybody in the mission control room is has their eyes glued to the screen, trying to see what could possibly be a mudstone. It's it's some peaceful about this. I'm uh, kind of enjoying just cruising around on the mud. I think I might make a, a heavier duty rover some point, uh, maybe even with uh, crew capsule capabilities, and uh, just do some driving around. Uh, I think that might be kind of fun, and it would be, uh, if, definitely if we had crew in the capsule, it would uh, make for a good point of view. Maybe see if we could go discover an anomaly. So I'm looking at this, and I'm realizing, like, this rock isn't going to be isn't going to be uh, a Munstone either, so I designed to avoid it, especially just in case if it does have any kind of collision. Uh, I was going really fast, and I think smashing headfirst into a rock that has collision would be uh, fairly disastrous. Okay, so we just uh, keep on searching. We got plenty of battery. We're actually not even using up that much energy. Uh, we still are in a deficit, so we're still going down, but we're making up for most of the energy that we're expending. So I bring up the map, um, and in doing so, I'm not paying attention to the driving. Um, and nearly disastrously we flip. Uh, I say nearly because of this uh, reaction wheel that uh, spontaneously I decided to put on the rover in the design phase. Um, and that saves everything. That and uh, my quick action to uh, stow the communications dish and the solar panel. I was able to pop those away. So I pop on 
the finder uh, just for a bit because I'm thinking I'm like okay so I just messed up my rover now before I go on a wild goose chase let me see if there's anything in the area any one rock and I can know to go to that specific area and when I turn on the object finder I realize oh they're all around me um, so I turn it off and then I just head in the direction of one that I thought would be closest um, but uh, I'm not exactly sure where it is and I see okay it's over there over the horizon yeah so there's uh, quite a few also um, this isn't solely the, the Munstone that's every single scannable object so I have to make sure that I find a Munstone and not like a crater or something um, so yeah so I uh, zoom in on the map hoping that maybe that might show me something but it doesn't but that's okay And, uh, oh, I see that my front right wheel is uh, not turning with the rest of them. So I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, is this a glitch or something? And then I, it dawns on me. It's like, oh, you know, I took a took a roll. So it's probably broken, um, which is why I'm having a little more difficulty steering than normal. Um, but that's okay. So yeah, so now we're just uh, approaching what uh, I think is uh, a Munstone. And everything in the rover view, doing things like this, everything is a lot farther away than it seems. Like, I feel like I should be coming up to this rock six times before like already should have been there but uh that's just how it goes with roving i could have sped up the footage you know i i could have cut out uh parts of it that you know where things weren't going on things weren't happening but i thought it might be better to just include the whole uh mission here to just kind of show how something like this goes along uh, and it, you know it might be fun to see it uh, in its entirety uh, so I mean let me know if uh, this was boring or if uh, you enjoyed it um, and maybe I'll do more roving I mean I'm probably going to do more roving no matter what but But here we are. We found our very first Munstone. Um, and it's a big one, too. Rising. So yeah, so we try to slow our speed so we don't crash into it. Because once again, these, these rocks have collision. Um, and then we stopped just short of it. But thankfully, we stopped close enough that our arm worked and we didn't have to readjust ourselves. So here we go. Drum roll, please. This is the, the whole reason why this, this little guy is here just uh, do that scan to just scan 33% of the science but once we transmit it we uh, successfully complete that contract so we're gonna just go ahead and put this uh, little rover into hibernate mode um, but we are gonna turn on the lights so that way if the crew lands in the dark they'll be able to still find it but anyways that is the end of this episode if you liked it please consider giving me a like and I will see you in the next one take care <laughs>